Are we on? We are on. Are we flying? All right, let's slap some numbers on this son of a dog. Uh, episode 208. 08. Where are we? 208. Where this, are we? Where is this We're, place? I don't know. It looks like a fucking, looks like a woodworker's nightmare. Can't <laughs> Wow. Yeah. A lot of wood. <laughs> Stand down, she said. <laughs> yeah. Back in town. Boys are back in town. That's right. Uh, we got a rehearsal today. This yeah. is the reason for our 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 Sunday attire. We're we're in our Sunday best. Like some leper messiah. When the kids had killed the band, I had to break up the band. Sunday best on a Tuesday. Chad, Chad, like myself, showing a little leg. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And Turbo's just got back from Colorado? Denver, yeah. Yeah. Colorado. How was it? It was good. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It was uh, one degree. One degree on. Wow. Did you guys share it? Oh, it was for everybody. One degree yeah. for everybody. Okay. I stole it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not sharing sure. nothing. Fucking cold in Houston. I know. Wow. I mean, this, is, yeah. this, has, been, this has been for a while. But what I realized today... When I was uh, doing my uh, black ma- uh, my, um, uh, meditation, uh, no, I was doing my writing, check it up. Just checking the uh, angles. Yeah. Make sure you're okay. All right. Um, yeah, it's it just how spoiled we are in Texas. You know, you get rain for a couple of days and it's like, where the fuck is the sun? What does it look like? What, you know, what, what, what is it? Then the summer times come, you're like, oh, I miss those days. That's how it was on this trip. I was like, it's Texas is nice. Every time yeah. I go somewhere, I'm like, one degree? Uh, oh, man. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was nice, but it was cold. Yeah. Like, frozen. Yeah. Like uh, like our friends up in Omaha, you know, they're, they're, they're just that, that wind and that, just that temperature drop, snow, fuck that. I'll, I'll, I'll take a few days of rain. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, good. Glad you had a good time. And yeah. Chad, you've been working like crazy, non-stop. Every time I call him, he goes, I'll call you back. And he goes back to bed. <laughs> well, so I spent uh, a lot of time with my uh, with mom yesterday. She, uh, as I think I mentioned on the show, she had a knee replacement uh, not too long ago. She, I think she's in her third week since the surgery now. She's doing really great. But it is rough, you know. Good job, her, Judy. We're proud of you. Her surgeon warned me as well. It's like it's, the surgery is the easy part, you know. It, you know, knee replacement, it's a, it's a journey. You know, you got yeah. the first few months are, are really tough. Just getting your body getting used to having this, yeah. this thing in there. So, mm. but is she's doing good. Is that why you cut your knee it's in solidarity? Yeah. <laughs> this is a badge of honor because this, I never used to get hold, I mean, jeans for, for most of my 30s and 40s. The first hole that would form would be in the crotch. <laughs> my legs would be rubbing together. Now that I've lost weight. Can, can we, can we, wait, we're back. Can we yeah. fucking censor that, please? <laughs> yeah, that's not really why. No, I'm mean, awake and aroused. What the fuck is this shit? This, the, this used to happen all the time when I was younger because, I, you know, that'd just be the first place that a hole would form if the jeans lasted long enough. This is the first time I've had a hole in my knee in probably 20 years. So, see, regression. <laughs> that's right. I love it. That's right. I love it. It's a regression it. diet. Yeah. So glad, glad Judy's doing well. We are, yeah. we're big fans of Judy. And she had the knee replacement because of her uh, black belt and ass kicking. Yes. That's what it was. So, yeah, you know, occupational you, hazard. You know, yeah, she didn't, she didn't do all the stretches she was supposed to. She just went out and kicked ass and then came yeah. back. And so, anyway. Uh, Should we do it again or our brains fried? Um, let's do it again and find out if our brains are fried. Fuck. Don't be a baby. <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. Fried baby brains? Fried brains. Oh, oh, yes, please. Fried baby brains? Yes, please. So back to Slappercast 208 on a beautiful Tuesday morning here in sunny Houston. Um, We are... Cozy Houston. Cozy Houston, yeah, yeah. That's what I call yeah. it. And uh, uh, so when we saw you last, we were in... Uh, no, it was like, Arizona before. Was it Arizona last? Last, last episode, we were in... Uh, Angleton. Angleton, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Angleton, yeah. 
Dirty South. Yes, Dirty South. With Mr. Mendoza. Yeah. Who uh, hopefully will be joining us this weekend. Well, last weekend. Yeah, last Saturday, y'all. Don't worry about it, y'all. Yeah. It already happened. Chad's just, Chad's just, just waking and baking. Edit. Yeah. Although he, <laughs> hopefully will be with us in, uh, on Mardi Gras. Yes. He's a couple weeks. Yeah, he's agreed to that. So, uh, Drunken Monkeys down in Galveston for oh, Fat cool. Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to bring, bring the Mighty Mendoza to the beach. And, uh. That'll be my first time there. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they have some, uh, go, go check out our, our website. We've got a, they got a great uh, poster slash t-shirt design that they're doing. Yeah. Uh, Sam, the owner, called me up and said, hey, can we use this? He put our logo on it. So it's a very cool black and shirt with the Mardi Gras Drunken Monkeys. Uh, Heck yeah. But yeah, so that's really cool. Um, Where can we see that? We have to, just there? It's, it's, it's on the website, I think. Oh. Chad has yeah, he sent a picture of it. When yeah. We're done. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And that's very exciting. And so I'm off to Ireland. Uh, the reason why we're getting this one done today is because I'm going to Ireland for a few days and uh, for my friend uh, Barry Dunphy's memorial. And uh, we'd also like to say at this moment to uh, we'd drink a toast maybe to our friend Andy Green, who we lost last week. Um, Andy, we love you and we miss you. And Ashford Pub will never be the same. However, it's still a must-see. If you're, if you're drinking... You got to go to Ashford. Great people, great staff. And Andy, to you. Cheers. Cheers. Andy was just one of these people. If you've ever been to the Ashford, which I hope you have, uh, Andy's one of these people steeped in knowledge, humor, wit, uh, uh, spunk, uh, just just a, 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 any kind of pithy comment. And stuff. just fast as a whip, you know, uh, ex serviceman too, you know, just fucking brilliant, brilliant person. And, uh, yeah, he had a heart attack and died uh, uh, week before last. So, anyway, so we're, we're you know, our uh, Japan and Sam and Sue and uh, Leah and all the crew at Ashford Pub, we know that you, we know what you're going through and we, uh, you know, hopefully can come over and maybe even play a couple of songs for them. Uh, that'll be last weekend again. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And I, I know you didn't know him, but you probably did meet him quite likely because he was at. He the was last time we played at the Ashford. He was I'm there. almost positive I did. Yeah, I know you did. He, yeah. he, 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 again, put the, put the, put the door open for us, made sure that there was a path cleared to get in and get out, you know, just, just up. And I mean, he, he, again, one of these people that just doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, one of these people that didn't, uh, did, you know, never met like our friend Jeff Quinn, never met, never met a stranger. Yeah. Everybody, you know, and if, if, and, and he was a little bit salty too. Um, our friend Brian Depew, a pandy, as, as, he's, as he insists on being called, he'll never see this. But uh, Pandy wrote a beautiful uh, little memory, or, you know, just, a, just, a, just a, what, it, what it means to know Andy Green. Uh, very, very funny and very, yeah. you know, very, very poignant. So, it's, you know. Well, I mean, if he's friends of your guys, he's a friend of Yeah, guys, well, so. I know that. That's why, you know, it just. Uh, and that's why I have no problem asking if, if, if uh, after the Roy Miggins cook off, which we'll have more to talk about, uh, you know, if we wouldn't mind going over and turn up first. Yeah, me, I'm in. <laughs> Get out of the van. We're not going yet. I'll wait. <laughs> so, <laughs> pause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, what yeah. else? What else been happening? The studio got new windows. Yes. Unfortunately, you think yeah. they're for the house, but <laughs> yeah. they're in the studio. Oh. So. No, we don't need any more distractions in that place. Uh, yeah, I'm going to paint the walls black and throw blankets over everybody. When I first opened the door, I went, we're putting in windows? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this is it? <laughs> yeah. I was excited. I'm like, I'm going to get to work over these couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the, the windows are for the house, and the studio is going to have, uh, it's going it's, it's to have to have some kind of, some kind of work done on it. Mountain. Yeah. Mount Cropmore in there right now. So uh, what, else, what else happened? Well. Oh, well, I will say one thing about Denver. I went to the Red Rock Amphitheater. I've never been there before. Okay. Ooh, that was. I was like, let's go walk to the top. You know, that's not that far. I was way harder than I thought. Oh, really? <laughs> way harder than I thought. As I was walking down them all, man, I was like, I could feel my legs. Even Stacy, I mean, she was like, uh. But uh, that was a cool place. I'm like, I want to see a show there. That would be. Yeah. I'm like, I, I want to play a show. Let's there. play there. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is. 
how do we get there? Like that would be. Is the entire seating area carved out of the rock? Yeah, and they stuff. do have like the benches right in it, but it's all the rock, and they're like adding to the top. So they were adding brick and stuff and stone up the top. I don't know what they're doing. Or it almost looked like they're building like another layer up top, but it was all. I mean, everything. It's. Oh man, I have to show you these pictures. It was. Yeah. I took some video too. It was awesome. And then there was this one guy. Yeah, the yeah. one one guy was uh, working out like he was running and then doing these like inverted push ups. And I wanted to videotape him. I was like, this guy was superhuman. Su- I've never seen him like it. He was just. Did you find it hard in your lungs? I think a little bit. I don't know. Not as much as they kind of thought. Yeah, it's more my legs where I was like, oh my gosh. But uh, it wasn't too bad. It was just so cold. So I think some of it was like hard to breathe. As it was just yeah. Like by one degree, it was so cold. But gosh, yeah, it was super cool. Yeah, I'd some of those photographs if you wouldn't mind. I would. That was it. Was fun. yeah. And you, you, you know, if Stacy, uh, the 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 lovely Mrs. Newton, if she if she was having trouble, then anybody would have trouble because I, I think that's about the the, the most fiercest. That's what woman I said. I've ever met. She was going ah, and I go oh, I'm toast. Yeah, <laughs> I'm toast. <laughs> yeah, but no, we had a good time and. Uh, um, did some good restaurants out there. And yeah. Man, it's a cool town. Cool place. I mean, not a town, city, but we yeah. kind of did the touristy stuff, but man, it was super fun. Yeah, we played Denver one time and uh, didn't found it underwhelming. It was, a, it was, again, a Tuesday. It was a crappy night, and uh, it was a decent club, Herman's Hideaway, and it was... Uh, yeah, they yeah. recorded our show, too. Yeah. They did video and audio. It was actually looked and sounded really good. Yeah. I remember oh, cool. the stage being good, but yeah. So, I'll have yeah, to get back to it. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to go there. Yeah. Well, again, it's, it, everything is within ear shot, eye shot, band shot, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you're, when you're, when you're ready to, you know, cause I mean, my, like I've said before on many times on this show, you know, 12, 15 hours is very easy and very, uh, it's just very easy to, to get there and back. I, 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 I can drive a lot. We can drive a long time. We, we proved it in the Arizona trip and, uh, just the, the, the nail it down at the right time and you can go. So yeah. So all those, like I said, in a few podcasts ago, uh, um, the, the fuck, man, it's easy. Cut, stop. Slow, slow down. Is that extra? Uh, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm ba- wasted on, uh, on the caffeine right now. But, um, yeah, you know, I said, beware America because we can do, just about anywhere, and uh, we have to, we got some calls from Philly. We're looking at Philly in June. We've got some calls. We've got some new T Bone Tom's dates added. We've got um, we've got a great festival coming up in April, and more on that later. Um, uh, in, uh, it just it, it's out two ninety. So our friends in McDade and Austin, it's kind of close to you, and uh, it's co- close to our college station and. You know, North Houston friends. So it's gonna, but it's gonna be. That's gonna be a really good one. Is that that show we talked about? Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I, I, I have to commend you on that too. Uh, Turbo had had a family vacation planned, and the date had uh, gone onto my personal calendar, not the band calendar. So I called Turbo and I go, "Hey, just want you to know, I, I promise these. You know, I promise this thing. We're, we're, we're gonna keep our word. You know, when we promise to do a show." Uh, and I just want to say that, you know, we're going to have to get somebody else because I know you're, he goes, give me one second. He <laughs> gets the phone call, calls back, goes, I'm doing it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so I commend you for that. I just, all good. yeah. And yeah. So, so just a lot of really fun things coming up. We've, we've nailed down Lake Worth. Thanks to our friends, uh, uh Sean Hanley and uh, Keith Michon in, uh, in Lake Worth. So we're going to be playing the Irish Brigade. On the Thursday before we do Friday, Saturday at Celtic Conch in Key West. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a six to 10 show now versus, a, I think that had us from nine to one. So six to 10 because it's a rooftop gig. Oh, cool. And you get to watch the sunset. And being on the Keys too, you have that 360. It's going to be very, very wonderful. I can't wait. Yeah. Be fun. I'm, 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 I'm excited. I'm, yeah. I'm excited too. We want to thank Lori. Uh, and Chad as well for doing the, the, all the, the legwork on the hotels because, uh, hotels typically run about 150 a night, you know, for a double room. Key West, March 2023, 
500, 700 a room is not, I mean, that's just bananas. Yeah. But that's just it's middle of the road. It's what it that's is. not, that's not sleeping in a fucking paper bag in middle of the road. You know, it's, it's, you know, so that's standard. So, uh, Lori, uh, merch maiden, shh, you know, knocked out of the park, you know, again. So with, with all the legwork done on that. So, and then Sunday up to Punta Gorda. Uh, to the Celtic Ray, which another rooftop. At, we, we won't be playing on the rooftop, but they have a great rooftop uh, seating area. And it's just, I mean, just, you know, Florida, for as, as, as crap as the food is, it's a decent, you know, it's a really, really nice place to, to go play. And are we leaving today? Let's go. I'll fucking go. Right Let's now. go. What are we doing? Yeah, I'll go right now. <laughs> Dude, yeah. That's the thing about the calendar. So I'm, I'm looking out at the calendar. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. But I'm like, oh, I have to wait that long. Yeah. I'm like a child. I'm like, oh. I can't yeah. wait that long. Give me the candy now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love it. That's, yeah, so that's, really a, that's another good one. Hey, hey, quickly, go the fuck away. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, oh. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey, Nancy, oh. Uh, I have a question for today. Oh no! Yeah, and uh, you, you guys want, might want to suck down some more coffee and get get ready for this one. I want to know what is the worst or best or both earworm song ever. Mm. Song that you hear, Macarena, five hundred miles. Uh, that just stays in. Uh, what was the one you just said? That I said. Oh, I want candy. Yeah, by yeah. is that Bow Wow? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I hate that fucking song. Mm-hmm. You love it, hate it. No, you don't. You love it. I hate it. I but at night when you're alone, you love it. No, no, no. <laughs> Dang, I tried. No. <laughs> no, that was a good try, but no. I actually, I hate it more. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you better take down the poster then. Yeah, I saw it in there. Shut up, <laughs> Marker. Um, uh, um, oh, come on, Eileen. Ooh, or sorry, come on, Eileen. If you're if you're from, I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, t- uh, tub thumping chumba wumba. Oh, god, mm. oh, get knocked down, but I get up again. Little can't touch this MC Hammer. That's another good one. I'm just saying, I would put that in the good one. Yeah, that's really good. I think that's a, I liked I, it. Yeah, do, do, do. but Rick James again, yeah. we, 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 we have him to thank for it. Groove is in the heart by Delight. That's a shit song, but again, that's a I love that song. Do you really? And it's, it's, can you cut a little bit of that? Because, the, yeah, well, it's got that great, great bass line. That, that does have a good bass line. That I think, um, um, what's his name? Uh, from, from Parliament. Um, damn it. The bass player in Parliament. Yeah, Mr. Parliament. <laughs> I can't believe I'm spacing on, I'm really bad about this. Like, my brain is going. But it's got, dun, do, 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 do. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Do, 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 do. And he, he and the, the bass player, whose name I can't remember, uh, Kind of scats throughout the entire song because they just put him yeah. on the mic and he's just just improvising all the silly silly comments and stuff. And I I there are, that's really the their only song. I remember my friends, a friend of mine, introducing me to them when it first came out. This is early '90s, like back in the hip, the, the early hip hop days yeah. when you know we had stuff like uh, De La Soul, oh and yeah, Tribe Called Quest coming out. And they were my friends were playing all this for me, and then they they showed me. You know, Delight's kind of cool too, and. I remember really, really digging that one song, but I didn't never really listen to any of the other stuff. So that that, that song was what definitely was De La Soul's one. main song. De La Soul, yeah. Uh, the main one I remember is uh, Three Is a Magic Number. But the, their big their big album was was the one that had Three Is a Magic Number on it, and that 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 is like like the Sergeant Pepper of hip hop. Yeah. It, it's like an incredible record from what I remember. So jump around. House yeah, of House of Pain. That one stuck. Um, uh, just can't get it off. Uh, Ice Ice Baby. I killed it? that. Yeah, I I like, yeah. uh, who, who did uh, who, who did just can't get it off? 
Uh, is it Depeche Mode? No. Um, well, it's, maybe I go on, well, oh, that one. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't, don't, don't be sorry. I was thinking. I was thinking of. Uh, no, I was, I was, I was, when you said I just, I was thinking of "Don't Stop Till You Get Enough," which is of course Michael Jackson. That's another one. That's yeah. another good earworm. That's a good one. Sh- shake your body down. Shake your body down to the ground. That's a good one by the Jacksons. I like that fucking song. That's that's one you can hear. I never really thought about it at the time, but you can. There's definitely, it's definitely a drum machine. On yeah, that one you, t- 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 you get to hear it just repeating, but it just works. Yeah, it's just basically the same. I think that the piano riff might even be looped. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I mean, I've never listened to it. That it never, it never closely, changed. But that was a big roller disco song. Yeah, I'm getting very nostalgic now about the those that era because I'm going back to Ireland, and this is uh, obviously we're going to Ireland in October. Get your fucking tickets. <laughs> um, but this is the first time I've been going back without you know fifty plus people in tow. So, uh, and I'm going to be going to to um, uh, my good friend Barry Dunphy's uh, memorial service. Uh, it's a no. It's just a get together. All, all our friends are. Uh, it's one of those things. Good friend dies, and you kind of realize, oh yeah, we're at that age where a lot of people are dying, and you know, a lot, a lot of people. Are, and this was out of the blue. This was a, this was a healthy, just a wonderful young young fellow my age, um, two kids, wife, uh, and just out of the blue, gone. So. Uh, uh, but I'm getting very nostalgic about, you know, because I'm, I'm getting to, uh, this time I'll have some time to, you know, stay with my mother and uh, visit family and friends and, you know, just see. So, so, so those, those songs bring back that roller disco time when I, in my, my very early teens. Uh, and, and those, uh, that, those songs with that great up tempo, you know, that 170 beats per minute, 150, you know, that, you know, yeah. that, that earworm stuff that I'm talking about, that stuff was, wasn't necessarily my cup of tea f- for just sitting and enjoying music or headbanging into, but it works so well at the, and you know, those DJs earned their money. Yeah. You know, by putting that playlist together and then you'd have the slow songs where you get to go out and hold hands and skate and, you know. It makes me think of Bootsy Collins, by the way, is the name of the bass. Bootsy Collins. Fucking hell. I, ah. yes. What, one of the, one of the many saints of, uh, seventies. Fuck. Yeah, but uh, what you were just saying makes me think of how we people like us in our our, our age group came to who, who you're a little bit young for this, who grew up with disco just a little bit, say, just a little bit too, young. Uh, who spent part of our childhood in the '70s like going with being surrounded by older, cynical, more cynical teenagers and twenty somethings who were shitting on disco. You know, like, well, I guess disco must be shit, and then. Much later, like I remember my, my early 20s, almost everybody I knew in my age group was looking back going, this disco stuff's really good. <laughs> you know? I mean, the production alone is, is enough to go, Holy Well, they shit. had to have that high production and they yeah. had to have that amount because of the systems you're going, you know, Club 54 and, you know, for sure. You know, New York, you have all these, you can't put in this low, low frequency stuff. It had to be that high, that decadent sound. Uh, but the other songs that came to mind too, when you were saying that too, is that, you know, Bee Gees, yeah, Staying Alive and Abba's Dancing Queen. And, uh, that's what I think of when you e- say disco. Yeah. Right. But again, that stuff. Now there are people, there are holdouts like, yeah, exactly. Keith York, uh, our, 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 our dear friend who had his drums stolen recently. That's right. And I hope the motherfucker that gets him just, just mm. fucking dies slowly. Um, Keith is a Houston, he's beyond a Houston legend, but he is a, he's a, he, he is a god in Houston. And uh, he still detests disco. And I understand, I understand why, because he's one of these prog guys, but he's a prog guy that he not only grew up listening to that stuff, but he, like I have, I have nothing but evil and, you know, just blackness in my heart, you know, there's just, you know, so there's no way for me to enjoy fully, you know, the beauty of Barry Gibb or Abba or something. As, although I love it. But he doesn't have any time for that because his, like, if you were, if you were an 80s metal band, you got decimated by the grunge movement. Yeah. Same thing for the prog guys and the rock guys, the, the heavy rock guys in the disco era. They all got mowed over and left in the dust. And then, you know, you fast forward a couple of years and disco is gone and they have the burnings and, you know, the album burnings and all that shit. That goes away. Then they all want the rock guys back. 
But much to their chagrin, they want them back at less money to play at the at the venues than they were getting beforehand. And they were getting shit beforehand. So all these guys have got chips on their shoulders, massive chips on their shoulders, and they're holding grudges and they're they dislike anybody that's promoting that kind of stuff because it's it's a it's a you know it's again who wasn't said uh dave chappelle said uh he learned very very early on he said don't mess with another man's paycheck when you do when you mess with their livelihood they'll come after you you know and it, it won't be pretty mm-hmm. so that kind of yeah yeah earworms mm. so who did just can't get enough was that depeche mode I think that was soft. No, that's not soft. So that's that's, 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 uh, that's uh, uh, a that's a change of love. Oh, that's another earworm. Yeah, it Very is. Very good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think it was Depeche Mode. I think you're right. Yeah. I don't craft work. What'd you call Depeche Mode again? Depressed, depressed Toad. Depressed Toad. Depressed Toad. <laughs> depressed toad. That's good. <laughs> and then I call it when, when, when Chad does his impersonation. That's called squeezing the toad. Squeezing the toad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just can't get enough. Yeah, see. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, under pressure. Queen down. Oh yeah. I mean, that, that's no, that's the, that's been on ice. Watch your mouth. You just fucking what? What? you owe him twenty five cents. Ah oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, twenty eight inflation. Oh yeah. Shit. Up. Yeah. Fucking tough crowd. Yeah, I think I think another reason why one of the many reasons, one of the main reasons I think why people of that who were a little bit older than us, because you know, Patrick and I were only you know six seven years old when disco was was first made it big, right? 76, 77, 75, maybe earliest. I don't know. But we had, you had groups like the Bee Gees who had started off doing just pop, you know, like Beatlesque sort of yeah. slightly progressive mm-hmm. pop that they were doing in the late sixties. And they became, they kind of, because disco was perceived as this bandwagon that everybody was jumping on. Like, Ooh, let's, let's capitalize on this latest trend. So I think there was a lot of cynicism at the time about it because people appeared to be selling out. Mm. Bands like that completely changing their sound, to, and but the thing is, the, you, it's hard to think of a better disco song than "Staying Alive" or uh, "Should Be Dancing." Oh, uh, all, all that stuff. I mean, Ka- Casey and the Sunshine nailed that whole genre. Mm-hmm. They, Casey and the Sunshine, or or yeah. or uh, uh, I mean, even the Rod Stewart stuff from that time. Yeah, or, or that's another example. Of yeah, somebody just jumping on that. Yeah, I mean, but you listen to it. Yeah, you yeah. listen to his early stuff and Small Faces and that kind of stuff. That guy's singing his balls up, and then you go into the disco, kind of the transition. The only, the only, the only uh, can't be the only time, but I detest Kiss, hate them, and they did the the disco album, which I just love to shove in the face of anybody that still likes Kiss. You know, so you know, well, okay, I understand what they did, but no excuse for that. No excuse for that. Mm. Uh, and, and again, I'm, I, I, I'm purposely not letting that side of my head go to that song because there is that song that they did, that, that Kiss song, that, that it was just appalling. And I just don't understand why Dimebag Daryl was shot and not Kiss. You know, I just, you know, <laughs> oh, fuck it. I'm, 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 now I'm angry. The drummer Let's wrote that song. Move on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Didn't Carmen, Carmen and Peace uh, co-wrote... Uh, do you think I'm sexy? Didn't yeah. You? Of all the people you think. <laughs> but those, the, crazy. Yeah, Carmine, those people wrote the really great. Disney I know. Yeah. I, I mean, but they had that groove. They had that. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. And uh, uh, he's pointing at me. Yeah. I'm pointing at you. I'm in trouble. But mm-hmm. a good band starts with a good drummer. Oh. A great band starts with a good drummer. A fantastic here, here. band starts with a good drummer. You just can't, you cannot, you can't, you just can't exist without, it really is, it's like going to battle with, it's just like going to battle, you know, with a like shield or, or no, just, or just, just dimwits, you know, it's just, or, or, or you, you, there's just no way around being, being nasty. And so I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to try to be nice, but it really is. It's like, it's like purposely handicapping yourself, like tying one arm behind your back and, you know, getting out of the fight. It's just, there's no, there's no. That was so tame. I feel, yeah. I feel like I just... <laughs> I couldn't be better. Yeah. But anyway, but that, that's the... Speaking of that, End of the World Comes. This is a good one. Oh, God. This is a good one. End of the World Comes. Look at his eyes. Yeah. It's good I'm fucking serious. Yeah. Yeah. He's serious right now. End of the World Comes. Give me one famous person that you want to take with you. Okay. 
It's the end of the world. You got to pair up with somebody. Give me a famous person you want it. You you want to go to battle with? Like who I'm right or dying with? Yeah. And don't say the lovely Stacy because no, I she'll to... kick all around. She'll yeah, she'll no. she'll take yeah. That's what so I was gonna say, say, but then you yeah. Do not say that. Do not say that. Yeah. And you don't say it either, and I won't say it. All right. All right. We she's it has to be seat. somebody you're not related to. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Famous so, person. Famous person. Who? What famous person would you take right now? I think you're dead. Right. Well, the dead ones are kind of they fucked up. On, no, I'm just kidding. You're no, dragging yeah, that yeah, one it, 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 the dead ones in their prime. Who would you take? David Bowie. In a fucking heartbeat. Yeah, you're not Why? surviving. Do you, you want to sleep with him? You want to fuck him? <laughs> is it like Walking Dead? No, I'm talking yeah. about. Is it Walking Dead? Like we got to fight zombies? Like, we, or we just somebody I got to talk to and hang out with? End of the world. You got to survive. You got to survive. Yes. So I'm just wondering. What, what, <laughs> yeah. Is he? I mean, is he? A, is he an outdoor? No, but just because he's. No, I wasn't even thinking about that shit at all. Okay, sorry. I should have said that. Okay, scrap David Bowie. Sorry, David. Yeah. Why? Why are we taking picking musicians? Though, for this? No, no, I didn't say musicians. I said famous person. Oh, famous. Okay, I'm just thinking. Famous person. They're all musicians. Uh, famous person. Okay, what? For, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what that is. Uh, so we're literally... Okay, so, literal so, so, start again. so end of the world, you need to survive. We've got to pick somebody that everybody knows. De- so, yeah, I'm not, not, sorry, I'm not, mm. again, I'm way... I'm light years ahead of everybody. I'm, you thinking, I'm thinking about going into the afterlife with somebody I, I wanted to actually talk no, to. No, 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 no. Who are you saying, sir? Well, when you said, when you said, you know, ride or die, I was saying, who would you, you know, who would be the, that person? That yeah, who's you, swinging the hammer coming in all, you know, I'm thinking, who's... Well, uh, the, the, the person that I'm thinking of is a musician and mm. uh, what, what, just, I, one of my heroes is David Lee Roth. Uh, I, I, uh, his book, Crazy from the Heat, his videos that are he does these podcasts i don't even know if there's any set time for them to come out but he'll come and there's no beginning and end to it he just comes in and he does and every word in there he may embellish a little bit he may add a little bit here and there but he has done everything rock climbing uh just got lost in the jungle literally into the into the himalayas into the depths of africa i mean just if he wants to if he wants you know and his survival uh tips are beyond reproach. I mean, you just cannot put into words how he does. But his stuff, again, is kind of like I'm feeling now. He is yeah. like I'm feeling now all the time. David Roth is 100 miles an hour at the fucking max all the time. It, it, but, and, and again, even if it's not 100% factual, even if he, he, he decides to add a little bit for the, for the tail, for the color and the size and the, the enormity of that, tale that he's telling I still want that guy because because there's no I can't in his vocabulary yeah yeah plus he you know CPR and he and he was a medic he was a medic so again that was that was my yeah. that was my you know you said right I was like oh okay end of the world so you got to fight your way you want to survive you don't want to just fucking give in you want to go who's who, who you got that is one of the oddest tales in Iraq history is that that period where he actually learned CPR and worked on <laughs> Ian. Not really. I, 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 only because his... I mean, who else in his stature? Well, but that's what I'm saying. The, the reason why I disagree is because his dad was, a, was an optometrist. And he, from an early age, his dad would bring him to the hospitals. And Dave was uh, immersed in the, in, the, in the care, in the, the, the care of others. You know, the, and, and he really does, as badly more than it blows him out, as he is all the time. He is big as heart, doesn't have, uh, although he's got the DJ thing going on, uh, David, top of the board, blah, 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 you know, he's still got the, the, the uh, you know, the, the, the framework that he's built on is all heart. It's all, so, so yeah, he was, he was immersed in this. So, so he always wanted to help. And, you know, again, the energy, the, 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 the focus that it takes, because when you talk to him, there's no focus. But there is. Yeah. He, you just can't follow him. Well, I mean, the, the thing for anybody to go from, from somebody who had as much money as he had, and I know this was during a period where he wasn't doing stuff with Van Halen, so he wasn't as successful, but still, he was getting tons of royalties, I'm sure. I would hope so. I not not really. Sure. Yeah. That's in the book, too. you got to read that book. Right, yeah. But for, for anybody who has come from that to go into 
that kind of work, which is, that's really hard work. It's not just the, 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 the challenge of learning how to actually administer medical uh, treatment to somebody, but, but being on it, work, working in an ambulance and going in, that's, that's dirty, potentially scary, dirty, dangerous. Yeah. Work. And, and you, and you're dealing with it's mental tough. illness yeah. a lot of the time. So that's amazing. Mm. To me. Yeah. yeah. It's just amazing. And he, he is another, he is another, he is a, if anybody out there is, 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 is friends with Diamond Dave, pass his information on, I would, I would just kill yeah. to have five minutes with that guy. Five minutes. It would end up like, like, uh, the movie Misery. He'd be ended up even tied to a bed. I'd be like, tell me another story. You <laughs> tried to run away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, yeah. I was thinking, game replacement. Yeah. I was thinking, uh, survival. I was trying to think of musicians I, I like who, who are way more savvy than I am at surviving. Steve Earl comes to mind. I don't know how outdoorsy he is. He just he, he looks like strikes. It. He, yeah, he strikes me as somebody who probably knows how to use a gun and to light a fire and stuff. So yeah. I don't know. I I, I, I don't know. I see somebody I could sit and talk with at a campfire. And yes, not, and, not, and, and another huge, yeah. huge mind. Yeah. Um, and that guy's been through some shit. Yeah. Does it got to be a musician? Don't no, a famous person. If I'm going musician, I'm gonna go like. Willie Nelson or Keith Richards, because they just don't, they don't die. die. <laughs> <laughs> they just not, but can they keep you alive? I'll keep them alive. All right. I don't know. All right. I would yeah. think, I, I think I also thought of Harrison Ford, too, because he, he does, he has saved people's lives because yeah. he, he's a helicopter pilot, too. There was this famous story where he rescued two hikers off the really? face of a mountain. Yeah. How do I not know any of this stuff? Yeah. Well, because you're in a cave. So, well, I'm going with Chuck Norris. That's, that's assuming there's helicopters in the, the world apocalypse. is afraid of Chuck Norris. That's where I'm going. Me and Chuck. Okay. That was more my comedy one, but no, I'm going uh, Willie Nelson. I think that'd be the funnest day ever. I don't know well, how long we'd make it, but. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can build a fire. All right, so so question really? question for you all. Uh, uh, who's surviving? Yeah, so who's going to survive? Is it going to be Turbo and Willie Nelson? Is it <laughs> going to be Chad and and Steve Earle? Is it going to be me and David Lee Roth? Mm. I don't think that David Lee Roth could stand me for five minutes. <laughs> it'd be like, hey, 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 tell me the other, hey, hey, what about the time? Hey, hey, do you remember? You know, it would be the. I don't know. Like, hey, he loves talking there. about himself. Huh? He loves talking about himself. Well, why so, wouldn't he? Yeah. He's, he hadn't even scratched the surface. Minutes, it was a five minutes with him. You wouldn't get a word in edgewise. You know? I, I don't care. I don't care. Two give, hours give with him. Give, word. Yeah. <laughs> give me all the words. Give me all the words. Give me all the words. He used up all your words. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, another one. Another one. And again, this is going to be, this is going to be, yeah, mm. this is going to be controversial, but uh, R. Kelly. No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, another one that I would like to uh, <laughs> hear me so, out. So, so yeah, <laughs> too old. It's not. The, it's not what it looks like. Um, <laughs> another one that I that, that, that I think would be tremendous at surviving is David Letterman, and the reason being Time. is because he's kind of outdoorsy. He's got that place in Montana, and he is uh, he fucking he looks like he would scare off grizzly bears right now. He's got the beard, and he's got the but that guy. I don't think I, I don't think he's ever coughed. I don't think the guy's ever had a sneeze. He just looks. He stayed in shape. Yeah, I mean, you really that really became evident after he after he uh, went to uh, CBS. Um, I'm sure. I mean, he seemed like he was in fine. I just, I just remember noting that when he was around fifty, around the time he was turning fifty or something, he just all of a sudden seemed to. You could kind of tell he's working out. He doesn't like strutted or anything, but every time he took his jacket off, you're like. Dude, that guy's built. You know, he's he's taking care of himself. Yeah. So I would say built. I'd say felt like right. I think. It, it, I mean, I could be wrong. It, it looked like he was working with weights at least back then. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I it's never kind of shredded because he's got the big fuck off beard now. So it's, he yeah. looks more. He's kind of an old man. You know, outdoorsy mode. Yeah. But back then, he was like whenever he took his jacket, I was like, yeah. You know, yeah. It was, it was no wonder the chicks were always you know frequently getting flirted with. When when uh, oh yeah when women would come on so oh yeah much cuter in person and stuff like that yeah I, mean, I, I I remember that I think it might have been Lisa Marie who who uh, R I P it yeah. might have been uh, I think it was uh, Lisa Marie Presley on the Letterman show and she was she was doing that exact same that's right. thing that's was right that, was that right yeah that's well, when you said that. that I was like wait a minute that, yeah that would happen often though yeah yeah yeah, yeah. not verbatim what she said but still yeah. yeah I might even grab Obama and be like all right man. 
We got aliens. What's up? Yeah. yeah. Just me and you, man. Like, tell me what's up. Again, I'll, I'll give you that because we're the secret bunkers, you know? Yeah, and, and you talk, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. But you talk yeah. about book, book smart and, yeah. and, you know, uh, uh, insightful. Yeah. Also, too, the people that like, 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 uh, like, uh, you know, and Steve Earl, same thing. These people that have that foresight, these people that have not just, uh, Stephen Colbert, another one. Another great, which we, okay, let's stop doing fucking TV hosts. Uh, but Stephen Colbert is one of these people that has read and can recite. And that son of a bitch, if, if it, if he walks past it, he knows it and memorizes it and then spits yeah. it out verbatim. You know, he's just. Yeah. I, I want to find more. I, I love, my favorite thing is he's, he's a great interviewer, but it's great to find places or situations where he's talking to somebody where he's not constrained by that, by that format yes. of a show. Yes. Because there was there were some moments like he's he's a very extremely philosophical yes uh very deep guy and very enthusiastic about life in general and when the moment I think about it, it was it was funny that he tried to do this in 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 that this particular uh, uh scenario or framework but he was it was a uh, comedians getting in cars getting coffee yes that Jerry uh, Jerry not really Jerry Lewis Jerry Jerry Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld show Jerry Seinfeld. You Jerry. Ball, man, <laughs> and they they're sitting at a, a diner. Um, Stephen Colbert and, and Jerry and I forget I think they're talking about music and, and Stephen goes off he's just rhapsodizing about something you know that moment where you yeah. where you get this and, and Jerry's like Stephen it's, it's, it's too much it's just too much and you can see Stephen go right, get, yeah, he gets frustrated like come on go with me there come on well, when Stephen made the too move, philosophical for Jerry <laughs> when Stephen made the move to uh, well first when he made the move in, back in Comedy Central to the Colbert Report I thought to myself, self, uh, this is going to be too deep. This is going to be too vast for the Comedy Central audience. Again, I don't know who the audience were, but I was watching TV back then. And I thought he's going to be too much for the, the philosophy, the backgrounds, the in-depth, the scripture, the, just the stuff that he just can throw at you. Uh, I'm not a Lord of the Rings. I've never read I don't know anything about. Yeah, yeah. But he is that. He is a, yeah. the master on that stuff. He is. He's. You know. He, he's entrenched. It's ingrained in his DNA. Yeah, he's it, a, it's a scholar. It's part of his life. Scholar. Very That's many things. things. Yeah. yeah. But I thought that that's just going to be too too much for this Comedy Central, and he made it work. Mm-hmm. He made it work. He really was. He was like a. He it was like a Bill O'Reilly with 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 fun, uh, and no sexual allegations. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it so was, no fun. it's no fun. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's it. But yeah, so, so he did that and then that was a success. I was wrong. And then I, he moved to CBS and I was like, ah, that's not going to, well, I, I said, yeah, I said to myself, self, this is going to work because he's going to have to dumb it down, which he did. And I was correct about that. Again, he does get to go off on those tangents and get to, you know, get to go deep sometimes, but he knows his all, he knows who he's talking to. When he's talking to, like, uh, Jerry Seinfeld or a, uh, a Harrison Ford, or when he's talking, so he can go deep. When he's talking to one of these one-hit wonders, one of these pop singers, he's able to kind of keep it fluffy and light and, mm-hmm. move, you know, move. So that, 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 the different gears that he has. Yeah, uh, uh, and, and, and on that note, do we have a, do we have a favorite? I, I have to go let him in all the time. Do we have a favorite TV Oh, Letterman. Talk show? Post? No contest, yeah. Who's yours? I know you and I are huge Letterman fans, but... I like Letterman. I like Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon? Yeah. Never heard of her. She good? She's hot. <laughs> She's hot. <laughs> I don't know. You yeah. know. I don't watch a lot of late night TV. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have to watch... I do watch the monologues to see who's... it, And I cannot tell you... Uh, I, 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 right now... It, my top three, number three is Colbert, number two is Seth Meyers, and number one is Jimmy Kimmel. Only because the content is so, it, 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 it's, it's kind of where I get my news because I won't watch TV anymore. And, uh, you know, I say I don't watch TV and I watch the monologues of those guys religiously. Uh, but they are current and it's, it's a, uh, uh, J- Jimmy Kimmel does a lot of play on words. And uh, that's that's yeah, one, that's fine. one of my favorite. That's he's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, yeah, yes. Doug Stanhope yeah. wrote that. Oh, really? Doug Stanhope and Joe Rogan they wrote that. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah, Joe, uh, yeah. God, yeah I, I know. There's there's a thousand. <clears throat> I, I think of uh, 
when we're talk, talking about your longer, more in-depth interviews, um, is it Bob Costas, is that his name? Bob Costas? Yeah. Costas is it Costas or Costas? Costas, Costas yeah. Sports he guy. had, yeah. yeah, for in the, in the well. 90s, it's like late 80s into early 90s, he had this late night talk show that came on after Letterman. It yes. Like, it was like the best, you know, two hours of TV where you'd, you'd sit through Letterman and then you, then you got to watch a whole hour of Bob Costas having a conversation. And then he would... It was so great. There's no theme music or anything. He would just come in and say, hi, I'm Bob Costas. I'm sitting here with Paul McCartney. And you should get dive straight into the conversation. And that would be nothing but conversation for like a whole. Sounds like he stole our soccer cast idea. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I was, I was just thinking is that that was, he didn't invent that, that you know, in-depth format, but he did kind of bring it back at that time. Yeah. When you had, even the Tonight Show, uh, Johnny Carson used to be 90 minutes long. I used to, used to love that. I used to just go on forever and they shortened it to an hour. And then, then that became the new format for those types of shows. Mm -hmm. Back in the seventies, we had Tom Snyder and Charlie Rose was kind of doing it. Um, but that became like a channel eight thing or a you know, PBS thing for those of you who don't live in Houston, but yeah, Tom Snyder and Dick Cavett and um, all these people from the seventies yeah. who had much longer conversational uh, talk shows where it would just be people talking for a long time, they say, we'll be, we'll be right back with so-and-so and, -so and you know, a whole half hour, 40 minutes, and then another guest on. And that the person, in, in, uh, both Letterman and, well, no, Letterman did away with that. Sometimes he did it. But Johnny Carson always had all the guests stay there throughout the entire show. I remember that. And that's how the Dick Cavett show they would be moved. back in the day. And the Michael Moved Douglas, Michael Douglas was not the actor Michael Douglas, but the talk show host Michael Douglas. He, you'd have a, a, almost like a panel of guests on each show. They still yeah. do that. Like that's more popular over in the UK and Ireland now, I think, than it is here. Huh. Um, yeah. All those names are remember. foreign to me, but the, the, you know, I, 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 and I never watched David Letterman. I can't say never the early David Letterman show when he was on, was it NBC first? NBC. Okay. Well, I never, never saw it on that. Okay. But, but I, when he, when he went to C, uh, CBS, CBS I, I, I watched the, again, the monologue. Guests and the music acts did not appeal to me much. Yeah. Um, oh, you would have loved the the original era. Yeah. That stuff. Cause that the band too. That's when we had um you know the all the, the same still core members were there. Yeah, yeah. Sid McGinnis and, and Paul Schaefer, obviously, and Willie and uh um the drummer. Uh Anton. Yeah, yeah Anton Fig. Uh those guys. Sometimes Anton went there, sometimes it would be a different yeah. drummer, but it was always Will Lee, it was always Sid McGinnis, it was always Paul. And they were tight as hell. And it was the same kind of format. It was a smaller, you know, smaller yeah. band, um, longer conversations most yeah. of the time. And again, I've always said, I've always said my favorite band of late night TV is the, is the Dave Letterman's. Oh, absolutely. I mean, always, always, always heads and shoulders above any band that's ever. I will say, I, I'm not a Jimmy Fallon fan, but The Roots. Yeah. Great fucking band. I love that drummer, yeah. Chris, but uh, yeah. I, I'm just not a, I'm not a, I, I just, I can't watch, but I'm just. Oh, anyway, so uh, funny. I think it's just the smile, like the way he presents it, I think it's The way he laughs at his own jokes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need that. Drives me fucking crazy. It's he funny. Is, <laughs> Jimmy, as, as, as much as I don't think Jimmy's very funny, but he's, he's a good interviewer. He, he yeah. does have good conversations. So. Well, yeah. I'll let you guys alone with that. Before we get too far afield. <laughs> I think we should kill a song and get to fucking work. I've got a, we got some rock and roll to do. Yes, we do. I'll go first. What do you think? Please. Yeah. So to follow up on the last couple of weeks, I saw this video. Uh, I was watching old Howard Stern. <clears throat> uh, that's another talk show. But yeah, yeah. I was watching. Uh, and that's the guy. He's I, probably the one I like the most. I think maybe Jimmy no, Howard Stern. He's he's Howard Stern. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I seem to watch him more now. Yeah. Like old clips. I was just gonna say that, but he's last on the list yeah. as far as people to survive with. Fuck yeah, no, yeah, he's, he's, he's a pussy. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm picking him so I can push him out. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, hey man, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a shield. Yes, absolutely. A furry shield. You're the shield, man. Yeah. You know your role. All right, yeah. come on. No, he. Uh, Sorry, I was watching a <laughs> an interview he did with Alanis Morissette, and I'm like, oh, that's funny. I just killed one of her songs, and then he's he's like, so you toured with Vanilla Ice, and she's like, yes, she used to open for Vanilla Ice when she was a teenager, I believe, and I'm like. 
I'm killing another one of their songs because I, <laughs> I just did these two back to back. Yeah, so I'm just gonna pick it's a one. gift that keeps on giving. I'm just gonna pick. Sorry, one. sorry Kelly. Yeah, sorry. I'm taking it out. I'm just gonna pick her. You ought to know. It doesn't matter which song. I'm killing the last more set. You tour with Vanilla Ice, you get killed twice. So and I rhymed. Oh yeah. So what's this? What was the song you killed? You ought to know. Oh, of course. Yeah, that was yeah. our first big hit. Yeah, it? I actually liked the song, but what, was that when she was naked? I'm talking about <laughs> that, but that's all I. No, is that a video? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just I'm after Oh, that's place. right. Yeah. What was? was, was, was it wasn't that one. You ought to show. You ought to show. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just remember that. Yeah. I was. I was always. I was like, well, well, don't blur it. Now it's up here. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So okay. So kill that. What are you gonna? What are you gonna shine a light on? I'm gonna do one of the uh, one of the homework songs. So we're gonna go Children of Grave. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. So, Set off. Yep. Yeah. And Ozzy just canceled all his tours. Really? Did you know that? Yeah, 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 I saw that. He just released finally re- released a statement saying, "I'm not going to get back to uh, you know." He had back surgery, and he's uh, he's now not immobile, but he's he's not going to be able to, to tour. So after I think it was uh, my friend Mark Havna of uh, Catch My Carbon thing, you'll be hearing a lot about them soon. Uh, Mark Havna and. Uh, uh, he was just saying that his the tickets are now finally being refunded after I think about three or four years of um, yeah the of, of that he would so yeah. yeah the tickets are being he's released. probably done done that. yeah he did say it, that the letter got more dire to, as it went on because he said oh, I'm sorry I had to cancel the tour or whatever but then he said I didn't think it would end this way or you know my career you know whatever like, oh he's he's done done, he's and, done, and, done. And I, do you remember what I said three or four weeks ago. No, no, obviously no. Well, I, I said we we got to put a couple of Black Sabbath songs together because I think oh, Ozzy's next to go. That's yeah. I did say that. Just oh like, yeah. Well, ding! hopefully Penalties. now maybe he won't. Maybe he'll. I write down all. I write down all the stuff that I'm right because I'm usually wrong. <laughs> yeah. Maybe now he's he's giving himself a rest. Maybe he'll hang on a little bit. Not to, not to tour. But yeah, 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 yeah. He says so, he says he can still need, sing. You need the shirt. Chill the self. Room. And on the back, I'm right. I, I bet oh, you yeah. he told self, yeah. self, I'm right. I bet you he does some more albums though, because he. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, can yeah, still yeah. sing. He just can't handle the pressures of touring anymore. So. Yeah. 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 All right, Chad, you're up. You're uh, up. I'm killing. As I, as I warned him when I walked in, I'm killing a whole band because I don't remember any of their song titles. <laughs> but Toad. This is the second time you've heard the word Toad in this this episode. Toad the Wet Sprocket, who were in one of those '90s bands. And this was back when I would sometimes buy cassettes and albums just on a whim because I liked the cover or something. And I, when I, I hadn't heard any of their songs, and I just I liked the title. I didn't even I didn't, I don't even know. I, I know it's a Monty Python reference, but I can't remember what skit it's from, um, or if it's like from one of their albums or from the actual TV show. But it's a Monty Python thing, right? Yeah. Toad, do you know what it's from? I do not. I, mean, I, I, just, I remember it was Monty Python quote, right? I didn't know. I didn't know oh, that okay. either. But I, I, hate, I hate the band. I hate the name. But well, I I like yeah, the I name. The band. I like the name because I thought I thought it sounded like a band that I would like. It sounded like a weird, I don't know, like a Talking Heads thing or a Frank Zappa thing or something. I didn't, didn't know. So I bought the, the the cassette, the album cassette, and it's it was just the most boring, just bland, just no nothing to get a purchase on. As I remember, just hating. I remember, and I played it for Dwight. I said, I bought. I can't believe I bought this album. And he listened to it. He was like, Oh, this is terrible. But we were both getting angry. So we, Dwight went and actually wrote, we, we, uh, yeah, I think it was his idea. He had, he put it on the, on the ground, but behind my car and had me back up over it with my, my Honda like several times until it was like, it, you know, just shattered in pieces. And he took a picture of it and he wrote this scathing review of it that he sent to the Houston. I, I can't remember who was actually, I think it might've been published. Oh, yeah, that's right. He wrote it. He wrote it as like an angry, uh, uh, letter to the editor for the public news <laughs> and I think they might have actually published it dude that's next level <laughs> that is I was going to say that's a I'm going to stay in his rights I don't think I'm going to hear Black Matter I forgot about the, the smashing the tape the tape cassette with my dude, car that's uh, a long game right yeah. there of killing the song I <laughs> asked Dwight if he still has that picture or that article he wrote he should have sent it to Classic Rock Bob Bob Ruggiero <laughs> he should have sent it to him. I, I think it was actually public. It might have, maybe it was in the Houston Press maybe it was in the Houston Let's Press let's ask Bob Anyway, okay. How about that? So I'm, I'm, I, I've, I, I've debated about this because I've, I haven't actually resurrected a song by Robin Hitchcock before. I don't think. I think. No, no, maybe not. I've talked about I it. Maybe talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. But there's an album of his called Queen Elvis. Great title. 
uh, which ironically there is, he does have a song called Queen Elvis, but it's not on this album. <laughs> it's just a weird decision he made. But it's a really great album. This was back when he had the, the Egyptians, which were his backing band. It was this trio. You had, you had Robin on guitar. You had Andy Metcalf on bass. Morris Windsor on drums. And Andy Metcalf is one of those bass players who uh, is not often talked about. I would say underrated. I think he also played with Squeeze for a while. And he often, with, with Robin anyway, he often would play um, uh, fretless bass. And I'm not a huge fan of fretless bass, but when Andy played it, it just really worked. And there's a song on that record called Knife, which is this, has this a total riff song. It's this uh, sort of serpentine riff that, uh, a guitar riff that Robin's playing. There's this great groove underneath it. But it's, 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 it's a really weird. I always, you always hear me talking about weird songs I love, and this is, Robin has a lot of those. But this, this song is one that I think really uh, is worth listening to. The whole album is, is great. Um, and it's, uh, it's one I hadn't really listened to in a long time. I'd kind of forgotten about. But yeah, good stuff. Excellent. Have to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> so my kill. Have we killed Jesus Jones yet? No, but you should. Yes. Look, is is uh, uh, is that right here right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was their big right around the same year. I think. Yeah, that's what that's what I, that just kind of came mm-hmm. to me. And it was I'm going to keep my other one for later. But hate that song. Hate that band. Hate that name. Jesus Jones, get the fuck out of here. Right next, and then <clears throat> two. Uh, uh, that was in, fast. Huh? That was quick. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, it's into the world, man. You gotta be quick. That's right. That's right. Fast, <laughs> fast on your feet. No slack. Um, I'm also gonna say uh, in, in uh, uh, as a tip of the hat to uh, to uh, Barry Dunphy, the late great wonderful friend uh, Barry. Uh, I'm gonna uh, resurrect an Aussie song. Speaking of Aussie, uh, I'm gonna do uh, shine a little light on the 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 the. the album Diary of a Madman I thought was very uh, Ozzy was a huge Beatles fan and he uh, not only paid homage to them but kind of slightly ripped them off yeah, uh, who, who didn't right I mean who didn't you know you know you hear about all these f- just monster players that their first time seeing Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show changed a lot and they ran out and they started that so the Beatles were so um uh, instrumental in bringing all these bands, all these the, these massive talents, you know, to the forefront and to, you know and starting people's careers. Uh, and Ozzy being one of them. I don't know if that was his moment uh, for to, to to check. But anyway, so so the album uh, Diary of Madman has a lot of. Uh, I was going to pick a song off it, but I think I'm just going to do the whole record. Um, but I remember listening to it with Barry. Uh, uh, all of us back then uh, in Kalani listening to Diary of the Madman in Dominic Walsh's den or Barry Dunphy's den, listening to it on the on the on the on the turntable on vinyl, and hearing the the p- complexity of the the songs, but also the orchestral stuff. Mixed in with Randy Rhodes, who and Randy Rhodes was, you know, a very, very, uh, a, a, a very accomplished classical guitar player. So he added a lot of stuff in there. But then with all the heavy stuff that I like, and Ozzy to me wasn't my favorite vocalist by a long shot, but that album lends itself so well to heavy rock. I wouldn't say metal; it's a heavy rock, uh, and, and very, very uh, classical. Yeah. Uh, Catchy, you know, talking about earworms and stuff like that. Very everything singable. Is is Crazy Train on that record? Or is that fuck? I hope not. For it? Uh, <laughs> I uh, did we kill that song? No. Fuck Crazy Train. God damn it! Kill that fucking song. Kill that fucking song. Push up uh, the zombies, man. And, and and not just <clears throat> not just because I've heard it. You know, you you heard it all over the radio, but all these stadiums decided to. Take it on. Oh, hate that fucking song. Um, so bad. Uh, ooh, God, I hate that song. Um, what's, what <laughs> album was that on? How's he really feel? Oh, oh he's, he, he's angry now. Uh, New Depends, please. 
Thank you. Uh, no, it, awful, awful shit. But the 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 the, the diary of Madman. Uh, what else is on there? Sorry. Mr. Crowley. Uh, uh, oh, I'm coming home. No, no, no. That's, that's all. That's later. all later. That's all. Zach. Well, Mama, was, I'm oh, coming okay. home. Was actually uh, written by Levy right. of Motorhead. Yeah. So uh, and Zach Wilde again, not one of my favorite guitar players, but that song uh, and and uh, Ozzy and Zach Wilde's early collaborations uh, are, are 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 worth checking out. Uh, Zach Wilde is a great tone player. Uh, he's now on tour with Pantera, which I'm against. Would I go see them? Don't know. But. Is anybody in the original members in that band now? Yeah, Phil, the singer. Just, that's it, though, right? Yeah. And I think Rex Brown just got nixed from it, the bass player. He's an original member, but I don't think he's... He was with them at the beginning, and he's not with them now, so I don't know what the yeah. story is on that. But I wouldn't go see... I don't know if I would go see it. I like Charlie Benanti on drums. Uh, I just I, I just wish that somebody would call Alex Van Halen and get him fucking playing again. Yeah. Because that guy is... Uh, guy. That, that guy is too good to be sitting at home. Mm. Uh, sorry, I, I, but uh, yeah, let's 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 wrap this thing up, All right? Are we good? Yeah. Okay. So we're we're uh, we're we're working on an Arkansas date for March. We're looking at Longview for March. We have Atlanta nailed down. Thanks to our friends, the Muckers, M U C K E R S, Jeff Shaw. Thank you, the Muckers in Atlanta. We're doing a Tuesday show with them. Uh, Wednesday we have a travel day. Wednesday is a travel day. Thursday Lake Worth. <laughs> Irish Brigade, Friday, Saturday, Celtic College, Key West, Sunday, uh, Celtic Ray, Punta Gorda, and Paddy's Day, Paddy's Day, Paddy's Day, Chris Steele of Adams Tap House, College Station, Northgate, Texas. Yes. 2023, Paddy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. cannot wait. And before that, uh, next week for you people, uh, February 18th, a great Guinness test in College Station. College Station. Yeah. The warm up, Paddy's Day, piss up. Pre Paddy's yeah. Day, piss up. Yeah, it'll be fun. So are we good? Yeah, we're good. Let's go rock. That was a long one. I yeah. think we'll have to uh, cut this in two, she said. <laughs> anyway, Slappercast, thank you for uh, hitting subscribe. Thank you for telling your friends. Thank you for being you. Thank you for uh, having a couple of extra shots with us today. We're very, very, very happy to have you along. And uh, check out our schedule for the, for the shows coming up. And yeah, we're ready. We're ready for you. Cheers! Thank you, y'all. Have fun. Uh, okay. That was fun, gents. I was like, we don't have a double bass pedal. <laughs> yeah. Fuck okay. it. That was fun. That's fun. <laughs>